how to become a more positive coach or parent. This is very simple. You just understand a few things. Number one, understand that they're kids. Even the high school kids are kids. My son went on a recruiting trip to uh, a few Division I schools, and one of the coaches was very smart. He said, when they come to our program, we consider them boys. And it's true, if you look, you know, a, a man's brain isn't even fully developed until around 21. Some probably sooner, some probably later. A girl is much sooner. A man doesn't even peak athletically until 26. So when you win your NCAA title in college wrestling, you're not even at your peak yet. Or if you go to the NCAA tournament or you're in college and maybe you're never even an All-American, but you're right in there, you see some of those guys hang on for four to eight years and they will maybe make the world team one day or win the US Open or place. So, if your kid is out there with an underdeveloped brain and he's only 15 or 16 years old, he's at least a decade away. I believe in the sport of wrestling, 28 to 32 is when uh, you really hit your stride in the sport of wrestling. Because I think there's some emotional maturity there too. And you need a number of uh, numbers of, of years of experience on the international level. So I think that, you know, if your kid's 16 or your son is 10 or your daughter, you know, if, if they're 10 years old, they're 21 years away from hitting their real peak and their athletic peak, they're 16 years away at minimum. They're 11 years away before their brain is even developed. So you've got this kid out there and if they're 16, they're a little bit closer, but they're still half, they're half of what they should be. So you look at these kids out there fumbling around and you're like, yeah, you're gonna fumble a lot because you're not even fully developed yet. It's kind of not fair. You know, these famous athletes we watch uh, on the Olympics, they're still boys and girls, right? They're not even fully developed, especially on the men's area. So number one, keep that in mind. Number two, understand that your kids are probably not going to be the Olympic champion. Just accept it. We, 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 we accept it in baseball, don't we? Probably won't be a pro. Well, you know, when my brother won the NCAA title, one of the booster club guys in Nebraska said, congratulations, Tony, if you were in a baseball, you'd be signing a multi-million dollar contract right now, but you're a wrestler, so. So I was like, oh, gee, thanks. <laughs> you know, it's true. And uh, you know, I was all American, ranked number one, couple of times in my junior and senior year. I probably was along the same route. If you're even an NCAA qualifier and you win one match, you're top 20 in the entire nation in your weight class. There's only a handful of weight classes. If you're the top 20 shortstop in baseball or you're the top 20 center, I guess there's a center in basketball. I don't really know sports which seems odd, but I don't know anything about any sport. I only follow wrestling and I'm into hunting and that's about it. But, um, a center or whatever, a guard, right? There's a guard in basketball. If you're the top 20 guard in basketball, guess what? Million there, multi-million dollars coming at you, right? Well, in wrestling, you don't have that. If you're number 20, you suck. If you're not an All-American, you feel like your career sucked. So in those sports, there's huge financial prize money waiting when you're number 20. In wrestling, if you're number 20 in the nation, you suck, right? I mean, seriously, that's your thoughts, that's your parents' thought, that's the kid's thought. You feel like a failure. So if you understand that they're probably not going to win the NCAA title or the Olympics, a lot of things have to go right. Then you can start to chill out, okay? And when you chill out, you're not desperate. So many people are negative because they're desperate. They're pissed off because their kid's not doing well. Well, he probably is not doing well because his athleticism is crap. His brain is crap because he's not even developed yet. 
you're trying to make him do a sport that people don't even figure out until they're 30, that most people don't even wrestle that long. And so since you're mad and stressed out, or you're stressed out because they may not win the high school state title, right? And then you attack them. You're like, you're not doing that. You're not even trying. You have no heart. I hate hearing that. So, see the long term. When they're 22 and 23, now they're knocking on that door where all the puzzle pieces are coming together and what they're thinking and what they can do start to kind of coincide. So once you have a long-term approach, you can say, yeah, they're gonna, you know, if a girl wobbles on the balance beam, we don't freak out, we just get back up there, right? In wrestling, they're gonna wobble a lot. And plus the thing is, is when you're in gymnastics or diving or bodybuilding or a lot of individual sports, it's you against you. You have a, 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 a drill of technique moves that you do on the balance beam, and if you do it, you win Olympic medals. Well, in wrestling, you have your list of moves that you mastered. But just imagine if someone was hitting the girl in the back of the head on the balance beam, double-legging her, grabbing her wrist and pulling on her, and then when she kind of stands up, then they tackle her legs and headbutt her in the chest and knock her on the back of her head. She never gets a chance to do all of her stupid moves because someone's screwing with her. That's what's going on in wrestling. It's ugly. And your opponent has a lot to do with your success. And sometimes when you lose, it's not because you did something wrong. It's because they made you look bad because they were better than you. But you don't have that in an individual sport like gymnastics. No one can make you look bad but you. Right? So once you understand that the kids are uh, athletically and mentally handicapped, then you will also understand that they're not even going to hit their full form or their stride until they're in their late 20s. And even when they do hit their full stride and you've done everything and you've had all the coaches, spent all the money and time, they put all the time in, still a lot of things have to go right because guess what? They've got, there's 10 to 15 men in the nation who are also doing everything right. They're also 22 years old. They're college athletes too. Well, let's just look at state. You have about 10 other 18 years, year olds in some states, especially in the national tournament. You have 50 to 100 athletes who are expert trained, who have were dedicated, whose mom and dad spent the time and money, who had the training opportunities, who sacrificed massive chunks of their life. So yes, there are 20 to 50 other athletes who are just as deserving as you, just as well trained, and now you have to beat them. It is a long road and there's a lot of moving parts. A lot of it's just outlasting them. So it's easy to be positive when you realize some of these um, facts. And then you can start to say, how do I get my kid to the point where he loves wrestling and will do it as a 17 or 18 year old? And everybody does it. Very, very few quit. But they do quit. They quit as a sophomore and junior. They give up training, right? They get a job at Taco Bell. They chase girls. They get a car. And they wrestle just enough to keep you from jumping their ass. They quit. They quit as a sophomore. Sure, they're on varsity, they qualified for state, they might have even placed. Who cares? They quit, right? And you don't want them to quit. You want them to be full bore like they are as a 13 year old, or 14 year old, or as a 10 year old, or as a 16 year old. You want them to be full bore all the way throughout high school and then full bore for another five years in college. So how do you, the only way to help them to have longevity in the sport is they need to learn that they're not broken. If you're always picking on them, they feel broken, right? I remember when I was a senior in college, I was struggling. I lost my sophomore year. I was ranked number four. Then my junior year, uh, we were ineligible for the postseason. 
I was ranked four again, but then I earned the number one ranking the last half of the season. But I couldn't even wrestle at the NCAA tournament. So my senior year, I finally get another shot at it. And I was just, I was stressed out. Cause it was like, you know, I just, I hadn't been in the NCAA tournament in a couple years. I haven't really, it was just tough, you know? But this is it, this is my only shot. It's my brother won it last year. I gotta win it, I can win it. I was freaking on fire. Halfway through the season, I started to kind of like, what if I don't win? What if, you know, I started panicking, started setting. Then our coach was like, what's wrong, Nick? What's happening? Hey, this, hey, your elbow control's not working. Your level change isn't good. You should've beat that kid bad. You only beat him nine to two. You gotta score more points. You gotta be, you gotta relax out there, right? And so they constantly made me feel broke. And one time I broke down in practice crying. And John's like, dude, what the fuck's wrong? I just like, you guys are on my ass. I'm like, quit effing looking at me. I'm trying to practice. Every time I look over, you're staring at me, you know? But they didn't know, they wanted to help me. And so sometimes as dads, we want to help our kids so much that you stare at them, you make them feel broken, and you nitpick them and make them feel broken. So uh, the, the positivity is key. You'll be more positive if you realize they're average athletes with a half a brain. You'll be more positive if you realize it's probably not going to happen anyway because they got 50 other kids fighting for the spot who also deserve to win, whose dad is probably smarter than you and probably did a better job of training than you. You don't realize it, but you know what? You don't know what you don't know. There are some badass parents out there who've got a lot of things figured out. So even though you think you're doing everything right, at least half of your kids' elite competition, they had it better. So let's just uh, get that settled too. On top of that, they have to be around long enough to, to benefit from their maturity. And the only way to get them to benefit from the maturity is if you're positive and they keep them excited about wrestling. Because if they feel like it's just hopeless, you know, it's like your wife or you, if your wife's on your butt all the time, you're like, dude, this is hopeless. I did clean the house. Sure, there's a piece of fuzz on the couch. I didn't see the fuzz. You know, quit jumping my butt. I mean, you can always find a piece of fuzz. And if you're the dad or coach who's always nitpicking, the kid's going to want to quit, right? So there's my take on being a positive coach. And as a dad, especially if you're a dad who's also a coach, and um, if you take that advice, my son lost 45% of his matches from the time he was like second, third, fourth, and fifth grade. And he went on to be top 10 in the nation his junior year. Senior year had a couple of big concussions, lost most of his senior year, couldn't go to nationals. Had some division one colleges after him. A couple of good ones too, actually. Two of them are top 10 in the nation. Very exciting. And so uh, I've lived it. I know how it is. And he didn't have the raw athleticism that me and my brother had. And uh, you know, it took him some time. So it took some developmental time and staying positive and being the coach's kid is not easy, especially per the wrestling kid, you know? So uh, I've lived everything. I'm the best person that you'll ever find probably to give you this advice. So I want you to take it. Good luck. Check us out at perlerwrestling.com if you have interest in more. Good luck.